Hey there guys, uh, hopefully this doesn't make me seem too strange or too much like a stalker. We'll kind of see how this one goes. Um, I uh, wanted to uh, report at least some of the things I found about the early life of J. Richard Sides. So if you know your history of baseball simulations, you know who J. Richard Sides uh, was. He was the uh, founder of APA. And um, many would say uh, one of the uh, key players in the world of uh, baseball board simulations. He is the one who originally played national pastime uh, back in 1931, we believe, um, and uh, who uh, later took that game and turned it into um, his own game, the Appa Game Company, um, uh, in 1950. Now, there are a lot of questions about him that are out there, and, and uh, he was sort of a somewhat mysterious figure during his time um, running the Appa Game Company. But as I've discovered, when you start looking through the newspapers, he's really not necessarily all that um, mysterious. But there are a couple of questions that exist. So um, some of you will uh, know and remember the uh, old, uh, the old uh, address of the Appa Game Company, which was 118 East James Street, which just so happens in uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, which just so happens to be the place that he grew up in um, and uh, is also the house that he ended up uh, starting the Appa Game Company out of. Um, and so we're going to take a look at this and we'll see a lot of this here. But the first thing that we're going to see here might be a little unusual to you. This is not J. Richard Sites. This is his father, Howard Sites. So this is the Lancaster Examiner from uh, September 23rd, 1899. Um, this is there on your editorial page. And uh, this isn't actually the first mention of Howard Sites in Lancaster, but this is the first one that's interesting. 12-year-old son of John Sites of Roarstown. And John, of course, was uh, J. Richard Sites' first name, so he was named after his grandfather. And he fell from a walnut tree on Wednesday and broke his right leg near the thigh. There's actually two different newspapers that reported this um, extremely important news. It uh, shows just how much the news has changed over time. Um, and uh, he went and saw the doctor and um, ended up being okay because um, he ended up having children. So uh, that's when Howard Sites was 12. And uh, among other things, it shows to you that uh, J. Richard Sites really was very, very much a native of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I'm not sure how far back his family goes um, in uh, that part of uh, the state, but um, by that time, they were definitely pretty well established. 1899, we hop over to 1913. This is, I think this counts as Howard Sites' um, uh, marriage uh, announcement um, in the paper talking about um, everybody eloping to Elkton, Maryland. I've never been there. It's actually probably not too far away from here. Um, and it was Howard R. Sites marrying Miss Florence M. Lehman, both of Monteville. Um, many of you probably will know better than I do the uh, history behind um, uh, like some of these towns in Pennsylvania. I have no idea. I haven't done my full research. I just wanted to look at this quickly, and I thought that this was somewhat interesting. So um, this was uh, Howard Sides marrying what I believe is uh, J. Richard Sides' mother, um, and this would have been in 1913, sometime in August. I'm not sure exactly what the date was, and this was the only real mention of it I could find. We'll jump forward here to October 14th, 1921. This one's not really of much consequence, but I found it interesting. So under Roarstown, it says here, Howard B. Sides saw the Giants and Yankees baseball game in New York on Sunday. So um, I don't know if this is actually the same Howard Sites or not, though I presume that it is. There is a Howard Sites who keeps writing into newspapers in Lancaster talking a lot during during uh, the latter stages of World War I about uh, the so-called Irish question. I decided not to include that because I don't want to include a whole bunch of politics here, but you can look it up for yourself if you want. Um, if you have the patience to read through it, I do not. Um, anyway, going to see a Giants and Yankees baseball game in New York um, is uh, interesting. I, I, apparently that was uh, newsworthy. I mean, it was a World Series game. They didn't mention that here. Things have changed a lot, haven't they? Um, here we go. March 14th, 1922. Now, I, again, I don't know. It says Howard B. Sites there, so it's possible this is different because this is our, Howard R. Sites. So it might be a different person. I don't know. Um, this is the announcement of renovation by H.R. Sites at 118 East James Street. Now, I was looking up 118 East James Street to try to find out where they moved there. I know that it was after 1916 because it was sold at that time to somebody with a different name. Um, and it was certainly before 1922. So sometime in between then, they moved over to the famous 118 East James Street, which is where APA Game Company um, ended up with its headquarters. Um, my understanding was that Sites wanted uh, for a while to turn that into a museum, though I think that he was probably just kind of saying that in jest and kidding a little bit about it. But something to keep in mind. Uh, we go on further here. 
This is August 12th, 1924. And uh, this is just another mention of 118 East James Street. Mrs. Howard Side's daughter, Mary, and son, Richard, of 118 East James Street, are also visiting with Mrs. Smith for the week. I'm not sure who Mrs. Smith is, and it doesn't really tell us here, but apparently that was newsworthy enough to be included on page two of the Lancaster New Era of August 12, 1924. Now, I didn't look it up this time, but I know from my earlier research that um, you can find the wedding announcement for uh, Mary Side's um, which happens, I think, in the late 1920s, and that would have been J. Richard Seitz's older sister, if I remember correctly. So anyway, some other interesting stuff if you're really deep into that kind of trivia. I'm not that interested in it. It's just kind of cool to see. Um, in uh, the Intelligentsia Journal on January 3rd, 1925, J. Richard Seitz, here listed as Richard Seitz, age nine. We know that that's probably the same person. So Seitz was born... I believe on April 8th, 1915, we'll get to that reason why in a second. Um, he was reported to the police as missing the night before this. The boy left his home early yesterday morning and up to a late hour last night had not returned home. I don't know what happened. There's no follow-up story. Welcome to the news world of the 1920s. But apparently he was okay because on April 8th, 1925, he had a happy birthday uh, listing here in the paper. That would have been his 10th birthday, I believe. And that's why I'm pretty sure he was born on April 8th. Again, those of you who are actually APA historians will know, and you can comment below and let me know if I'm right or tell me all about how I'm wrong. Uh, but that's what it says here in the newspaper. Um, we'll go over here. This is a little bit more interesting. Lancaster New Era of uh, June 9th, 1928. So Sites would have been, what, uh, let's see, 13 years old. So it doesn't look like much, right? Um, there actually were um, two uh, mentions of this. So you can read Grantland Rice's column. And it'd be kind of fun to go back and read through all of those. When you scroll way, way down to the bottom here, juniors in field, the nature club team would like to schedule games with junior teams averaging 12 to 14 years. Communicate with manager Richard Seitz, 118 East James Street. So there again is J. Richard Seitz. Very similar to Clifford Van Beek, we see a lot of J. Richard Seitz trying to organize and trying to get the kids to do things together and trying to do a lot of this stuff. Um, I think that uh, kind of helps explain why he was able to organize the um, famous APBA League that later was the namesake for the Apple Game Company. In other words, uh, J. Richard Seitz, at least when he was young, was not the sort of person who just wanted to like sit back and do nothing. I think he was a little bit more interested in um, going out and getting something done. Interestingly enough, when um, I'm looking at the lineup here of the Nature Club, oh, no, there he is. He was pitcher, and he hit third. So uh, we have a, a mention of them here. Now, it's hard in the sports sections. You could probably search through and find all of the games that Sites played in. It's uh, kind of hard to see um, because uh, they just use the name Sites, and it's not exactly a rare last name. If you really want to get into this, you can look them all up. I will not. Uh, you can see Seitz didn't exactly pitch that well, regardless of what his national pastime uh, self-created card might say, as the Nature Club lost 16-15 to 15 in uh, seven innings. So they came back and almost won it. That's one of those games that uh, you tell the other kids about at the playground or you tell your grandkids about and embellish. We hop ahead now to uh, July 7th, 1934. This is the Intelligentsia Journal in Lancaster. And this one I thought was um, actually pretty significant. There are multiple versions of this story. This is just one of them. This is a list of the city and county teams for the second half of the season, players who were eligible. And we can see that, unfortunately, poor J. Richard Seitz um, and his rubber arm were released by the Brownston team. Um, Seitz had been playing a lot of national pastime by that time, but I, I do wonder if this release um, didn't sort of strike him and, and uh, ignite his... Um, uh, ambition a little bit and caused him to think that, you know, he wanted to do something maybe to overcome the um, ignominy of being released here by this uh, uh, youth team. Again, I might be way off, but if I were him, I'd probably be thinking something like that. I don't know. We'll hop ahead here to uh, August 24th, 1975, or 1935, I'm sorry. Richard Seitz, again, the same J. Richard Seitz, a student at Lafayette College. We know that's where he attended will hurl for the local aggregation with Ellsworth Stevens doing the catching. Um, so he uh, played for the Lancaster Rangers, which was a newly organized baseball nine. I would not be surprised if J. Richard Seitz actually has something to do with the organization of this team. Again, knowing what I know about him, what I know about his personality, I would anticipate that that probably was the case. Um, and then finally here for today is just this little graduation notice. Richard Seitz to graduate at Lafayette. 
J. Richard Seitz, son of Mr. and Mrs. Howard Russell Seitz, 118 East James Street, will receive the degree of Bachelor of Arts at Lafayette College commencement exercises on Friday. So anyway, like I said, I don't know, this um, one in here about uh, this uh, 1921 about Howard B. Seitz might be somebody else, right? Because this is Howard R. Seitz. But to be honest with you, I think it's probably the same person. I would definitely not be surprised if uh, Seitz's father was also a fan of baseball. There's some other interesting things that you learn as well, and I, I didn't want to go into too much detail because I don't want this to drag on for hours, right? But uh, Howard Seitz, for example, was a clerk, and uh, J. Richard Seitz grew up with a fascination of the printed word. I don't think that those things are necessarily coincidental. I think that there's a lot of cause and effect going on there. Um, and uh, I think that helps explain a lot of uh, sort of the early years of APA and Seitz's um, focus, not just on printing, but also kind of the cold way that he handled people and things like that. I think that he was just doing all that he knew how to do. Again, it's just speculation on my part, right? I'm not a professional historian. I know that there are people who are out there who have done more research. Um, I have heard rumors that they found things that may not um, be appropriate for a YouTube channel about J. Richard Seitz that also might not be very um, kind towards him. If you want to say more, you can tell me a little bit more down below or you can get a hold of me. I'm pretty easy to find. Um, but I still think it's pretty interesting to look back at this and to be able to find so much about him. And this isn't going to be the end of it, right? Because uh, we'll learn a little bit more about him during the war. Um, I think that most importantly, this gives us sort of a backdrop of his fascination with baseball because so many of these stories are baseball-related stories, right? I mean, that was just the way that he grew up. That was his entire youth. And I can only imagine that uh, 1934, to read that he'd been cut from the team and to see that in the newspaper, and it was printed like every week for like a month, uh, that must have uh, hurt. Must have hurt him badly. So... Anyway, I'd love to know what you guys think about this. Um, I'll talk with you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.